Coming up on 21st Century. In the United States, descendants of slaves are being crowded off their land. Some people thought, well, they'll build resorts and golf courses. And people started coming to play golf and live on the beach, and it kept growing. An uncertain future for the Gullah Geechee peoples. From the sugarcane plantations in the Dominican Republic, a story of insecurity. Hay mucha, mucho temor en la población, no hay garantía de sus derechos. And how changes are building more secure lives. Hello and welcome to 21st Century. I'm Daljit Daliwal. The legacy of slavery in the United States lives on today in South Carolina and Georgia. The Gullah Geechee peoples, descendants of African slaves, are facing a struggle to hold on to their land and culture. Up and down this coast, there were literally thousands of African descendants. I'm John Herman Blake. I'm a seventh generation descendant of a woman who was enslaved on an island in the Savannah River on a rice plantation. Most of them came from West Africa, Sierra Leone and Gambia. It really began about the 18th century as the Atlantic slave trade began to prosper, as people began to acquire property here who saw the potential for growing rice and cotton. And they began to import Africans who were enslaved on plantations. You could buy a plantation, buy 10, 20 slaves, and within three to five years, have a complete return on your investment. Dr. Blake is executive director of the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor Commission. The Geechee are descendants of slaves who settled in the US state of Georgia, and the Gullah, known for their masterful storytelling, settled in the neighboring state of South Carolina. I interviewed a woman who was born in the 1880s. She would sit and almost howl as she talked to me saying, oh, what a time, what a time. You got to do what you got to do. 12-year-old girl sell from her mama. You got to do what you got to do. And as you listen, what she was talking about was sexual abuse. That grandmother had to submit to rape and exploitation because that's the only way she could survive. I have a tape of a woman who talks about her mother being a breeder. And she said her mother's owner, who was a woman, says she hold her because she was a mother having babies. And he warned her. She didn't let her do no kind of a work in the field as she was having children. And, and I'm the baby of the 15. It was cheaper to have babies born and enslaved than to purchase, particularly when you didn't know what you might get, whether they would be docile or not. Many slaves fought for their freedom when the American Civil War broke out in 1861. The war pitted the pro-slavery southern states whose economy was built on the back of enslaved labor against the northern states and eventually led to the abolition of slavery. I am Victoria Smalls from St. Helena Island. I work here at Penn Center as the Director of History, Art, and Culture. Penn Center was founded as Penn School in 1862 for 
the freedmen, the people that were enslaved here in the Sea Islands of South Carolina. And the school was founded so that those people could be self-sufficient in their lives, to be educated, not only just to be educated in the academics, but also in the trades. And also knowledge of knowing that land ownership was very, very important. And with those three things, your academics, your trades and land ownership, that you would truly be free. Dr. Martin Luther King came here numerous times in the 60s and along with the Southern Christian Leadership Conference to help strategize the civil rights movement. It was a very hard time for them and they were under threat constantly. So to be able to get away from it all and come for a respite was very important. One of the buildings that are here on the campus, Gantt Cottage, is where he resided during his stays here from 1963 all the way through 1968. Martin Luther King, as you may well know, came from a middle class, rather uh, privileged African-American family and had not experienced poverty or deprivation and saw for the first time very much up close what poverty does to people. And that was an inspiration for him. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. embraced the Gullah people and their culture which was distinct from any other in the area. In order to preserve this unique culture and ensure the rights of the Gullah Geechee peoples, the United Nations launched an international decade for people of African descent in January 2015. The decade aims to recognize their contribution preserve their rich cultural heritage, and bring an end to discrimination. What a wonderful thing that the United Nations has embarked upon, and it fills us with a lot of pride and dignity as Gullah people. Some of the tradition that we brought over with us from Africa, very, very important to keep it going. It's already evident that some things within the Gullah culture are starting to slowly fade away. When you have sweetgrass basket sowers that are unable to find the sweetgrass because of rapid development in those coastal areas where it grows, it's very scarce. Penn Center is trying to help with that. Our mission is to promote and preserve the history and culture of the Sea Islands. Mr. Joseph Cripp Legree, he's one of the last cast net makers on our island. And so we are trying to offer that as a class at Penn Center to help promote and preserve that. Joey, what my hand, what my hand, do you know what man? Penn Center is trying to keep that alive. Besides a fading culture, the Gullah Geechee communities face another challenge. Their inherited coastal lands have attracted the attention of developers, a phenomenon that Dr. Blake struggles to accept. Some people thought, well, they'll build resorts and golf courses, and people started coming to play golf and live on the beach, and it kept growing. Defusky is one of hundreds of islands that make up the Gullah inherited lands. When I first got involved with Defusky, we had to work with an elderly woman who had inherited all of her property. And somebody came along and said, I want an acre of your land. She sold an acre of land for $75. $75. We had to get a lawyer and get that thing reversed. And she said, I didn't know how much it was worth. A lot of people who are Gullah or Geechee and originated on these islands had to leave for economic reasons. The people lived their lives planting, fishing, important ways until it was discovered. Developers went after it, and people used to come here to hunt, and it kept growing, and the more profitable it became, the more they became. Well, that's what's happened on Defusky. I don't think this culture of Gullah Geechee people, in terms of its deep, deep values, 
has been ever truly understood, I think it will be very important for building human community. In the Dominican Republic, people who live on the sugarcane plantations have traditionally faced hardship and exclusion. But a new holistic approach to supporting them is opening up fresh possibilities. Here's our story. My name is Stephanie Felix Perez. Y tengo 24 años. Soy descendencia haitiana, pero mi mamá nació aquí y mi papá también. Y en Batay 7. Un... Mi nombre es Alicia Isa. Na, eh, tengo eh, 39 años de edad y soy dominicana. Nací aquí en el Baste y las Pajas y siempre he vivido aquí. This is the story of people like Alicia and Stephanie, who were born into a life on the Batés. The Batés in the Dominican Republic are where people of largely Haitian descent live. They are home to some of the poorest people in the country. En nivel Bastelle no hay oportunidades ni para mí ni para otra persona que hay con deseo de trabajar, con deseo de triunfar. Nosotros somos en total, somos siete hermanos. Somos un total de eh, nueve, diez, diez personas dorm, dormimos en la casa. El papá picaba caña. Él, él picaba caña, duró 21 años picando caña. The Dominican sugarcane plantations have drawn workers from across the Haitian border since the early 20th century. A cutter's work was and still is tough. Labor laws are often flouted and wages are minimal. The cutters and their families traditionally live in the communities called Batés. There are an estimated 425 Batés in the country, housing some 200,000 people. Usually situated deep in the cane fields, Largely cut off from services enjoyed by other citizens, the Batés can be miserable places. My infancia fue una infancia difícil, porque mi papá picaba las cañas, que tenía que ayudarlo a levantar las cañas. Fue un momento tan difícil que me impactó porque quería ser, quería ser profesional, quería llegar más lejos, pero no podía porque tenía que trabajar. El ingreso es muy pírrico, eh, que está por debajo de los indicadores eh, básicos para, una, una, para vivir dignamente. En el caso de los batelles, viven situaciones bastante difíciles, bastante eh, vulnerables, deprimidas, que sobreviven. Beneco Anesia, himself the son of a sugarcane worker and born in a batay, now runs a non-governmental organization called Sedeso, which works with batay residents. Now, with the help of his organization and several others, changes are starting to take place. La idea de los químicos es una idea de todas la que estamos, pero como con un fondo porque no lo tenemos. Ninguna tenemos un fondo para empezar los químicos. Alicia and a group of other women who were all struggling to make ends meet sought the help of another local organization, a scala, 
which gave them the chemicals to get started and some training in how to use them. Entonces de ahí envasar esos galones, que luego hicimos distribuirnos en cada sector para vender el jabón. They started earning some money to contribute to their basic household needs, like having enough food to eat. For Alicia, providing for her five children and elderly parents is a daily challenge. Hay segmentos de, 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 del batey que no tienen nada para comer, que, que realmente se levantan en la mañana y se acuestan con hambre. And with the collapse of the Dominican sugar industry due to decreased global demand, combined with more mechanization of the plantations, jobs for the cane cutters are getting ever harder to find. And there's another threat to the Batay residents' daily lives that Beneco says is a great challenge to their security as human beings. Pero para mí el, el tema más importante es la parte de seguridad política. En el sentido de que los que son eh, nacidos aquí, que puedan tener un estatus eh, normal. Que le garanticen los derechos fundamentales que tiene la población que está siendo vulnerable. Mucha, mucho temor en la población, no hay garantía de sus derechos. It's a problem Estefanie, who considered herself a Dominican citizen, came face to face with. At 18, she received the shock of her life, a routine request for a copy of her birth certificate. Her legitimate right as the daughter of Dominican parents was turned down. Se me frisó la vida ese día. Yo tenía mi deseo de estudiar educación, eh, ser maestra. La vida sin acta, sin un acta de nacimiento es difícil porque no puedo ingresar a la universidad, no puedo seguir mis estudios, eh, no puedo transitar libremente como todo ciudadano de cualquier país lo haga. Stephanie found herself denied the basic rights enjoyed by others. Me sentí impotente. Realmente yo me sentí, wow, decía, ay Dios mío, yo, yo lloré, lloré bastante. Si no se resuelve el tema de la seguridad política, la persona, por más comida, por más trabajo, por más ingreso que pueda tener, en cualquier momento, el nivel de vulnerabilidad que está, en cualquier momento se fuma esa parte. Dealing with this array of threats requires a new approach focused on helping all people feel more secure in their lives. The Dominican government has teamed up with local organizations as well as the United Nations, including UNICEF, the UN Development Program, and the UN Refugee Agency. It's an holistic and integral approach where they consider the needs not as one but as multiple. Raquel Cazares is the coordinator of this project funded by the United Nations Trust Fund for Human Security. No, la seguridad humana consiste en garantizar a la gente las necesidades básicas, o sea, por ejemplo, la alimentación, eh, tener acceso a un trabajo, a educación, eh, vivir libre de, de cualquier violación a sus derechos humanos. Que hay mucha gente en los batallas que quiere hacer cosas de mucho potencial. Estamos apoyando a que haya un mayor vínculo entre el batey y, por ejemplo, salud pública, la educación pública y otros servicios a los que cualquier ciudadano tiene derechos. And one is the right to enough food. As Stephanie's mother, like other Batay residents, has received both funding and training from the project to grow vegetables. Le dieron la semilla que era ají, ají berenjena, y otra semillita más que le dieron. Por ese vuelto. Nadie puede entrar en ese vuelto a coger algo sin pedírselo a la doña. A threat to many Batay residents is that of natural disasters like flash floods. Estefany is involved in a simulated emergency.
And then there's the right to health care. The Tay residents receive training in some basic services like HIV and pregnancy prevention and postnatal health checks. More than a third of teenage girls from the Bateys get pregnant. Estefany's younger sister keeps records of baby's weight. Involving locals in the project is key, says Raquel, as in these extracurricular literacy classes taught largely by young Bate residents. These after-school classes help Bate children catch up with their education and reduce the dropout rate. Adolescents who never had the opportunity to go to school learn to read and write. High illiteracy rates in the Bates, more than three times the national average, have prevented residents from finding well-paid jobs and feeling secure economically. The government, another partner in the project, is trying to break this vicious cycle through the provision of literacy classes for all. Pedro Castellanos, former director general of the President's Office of Special Programs, says that these classes are open to everyone. <laughs> He also emphasizes how crucial it is to eliminate this social exclusion for the benefit of the whole country. Todo eso pasa porque logremos que la economía sea próspera y crezca. Y no podemos tener una economía próspera con gente pobre, con gente excluida. Necesitamos que la gente sea protagonista de ese esfuerzo. Access to education for all, he says, is the key. An approach Alicia would agree with. Unable to attend full time as a child, she took herself back to school as an adult. And now she and her colleagues are investing in their new venture. Que todavía no hay ingreso. Nosotras no estamos cobrando nada, pero sí nos sentimos de que somos útiles en algo, que que mañana podemos sacarle. Nos sentimos orgullosa porque somos un grupo de mujeres emprendedoras. Queremos triunfar y ayudar en nuestra comunidad. And of course, there's the right to enjoy the basic services and rights of any citizen in the country. For four years, Estefany, with Beneco's help, fought for that right. Then, in 2014, a new law was passed recognizing the citizenship of all children born to a Dominican parent and who already held a Dominican birth certificate. To date, authorities report that 55,000 people have registered for their citizenship documents. And for Estefany, the outcome was good. Uy, mi madre, me sentí feliz. Y mira, eso fue una emoción que por poco me chocó un carro. Pero la emoción de que yo encontré mi cédula y que ya yo dije, bueno, ya yo me voy a inscribir en la universidad. Ahora puedo ir, transitar libremente. Ya siento que, que va por un rumbo que quería. All these steps help people live more secure lives and start to build their own futures. Estefany now plans to study law. She hopes to set up her practice in the Bate to help her community fight for their right to live as equal citizens in their own country. While Estefany's future seems secure, the path to citizenship for many of Haitian descent remains unsure. The United Nations is continuing to work with the Dominican Republic authorities to ensure that no one in the country is stateless. And that's all for this edition of 21st Century. 
sharing the world stories. I'm Daljit Daliwal. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Until then, goodbye.